morning, bud. How's it going? I got the... Oh, hey, guys. How's it going? Well, thank you for joining us for this episode of World Extracts. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm down. We're getting there. Yeah, like the Edge was saying, today is another one of these special holidays. Kind of like we plan these things around them or something. As you can see, I got a uh, nice cold mug of ice cream. Some delicious root beer. My favorite soda. Mix them together and what do we get? That's right. A root beer float. Ah. ah, delicious. Yes, August 6th. It's National Root Beer Float Day. It's kind of an obscure holiday of absolutely no renown, unless you like root beer floats, which I do. Now you might be wondering, why did we choose such a weird holiday to base this episode around? And the answer is simple. I wanted a root beer float. And by writing it a part of the series, this is a business expense. <laughs> Fun facts, root beer is actually derived from the Native American sassafras root beverages. But modern day root beer actually contains no sassafras root at all. Yeah, that's right, Edge. The root beer isn't actually our guest for this week. I've actually just been unceremoniously lugging our guest around. I just like telling people about root beer, is that okay? Yes, our guest is actually the plastic bottle the holder of many things and bane of mother nature. Plastic, despite how ubiquitous it is today, is actually a relatively modern invention. It came about in the 1940s, but wasn't actually mass produced until the 50s when high density polyethylene became cheap enough to mass produce and was light enough to ship easily. Well, I think I'll put these aside and we'll move on to sample prep. Well, first thing we gotta do is reduce the sample size so we can fit this into the Q-cup. So to do that, for most plastics, you either wanna grind, cryo mill, cut, or, eh, I've heard of something. Let me, let me give it a shot. All right, well, uh, I didn't, uh, I, sure, I guess it works. All right. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and assemble our Q-cup. So we're gonna take our Q-disc, using our S1 stack this time, we're gonna place it into the base of our Q-cup, screw to assemble. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pour our sample right into the Q-cup. Then we're going to insert a Q-screen, putting it into the opening, pressing down with a tool, and then inserting it into the edge with a vial right beside it. So this same process can work for any kind of plastic that you're extracting, whether you're looking at PET, PVC, polypropylene, or polyethylene in any of its forms. The only thing that you might have to change is extraction temperature and extraction solvents. And that can all be programmed in the method. Speaking of, I'm gonna go ahead and load our method, press play, and press start. And so plastic extractions take anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes, which is just enough time to enjoy those root beer floats. I'll see you guys in a bit. Oh, come on guys, that's my 13th one. You guys gotta give me like a bit of a break or something. Jeez, oh man. I know, right? Jeez. We'll talk about this later, Rich. Anyways, here we have our plastic extract that is nice, filtered and cooled, thanks to the edge and that cutest that we put in. Common analysts that we might be looking for in a plastic extract include things such as UV stabilizers, antioxidants, slip additives or phthalates. And here we have our extracted plastic sample. Ah. And thank you for joining us for this week's episode of World Extract. For more information, please visit CEM.com where you can watch our webinars, access our application notes and our method notes. I'll see you next time. Oh yeah, like absolutely no, no, no milk at all. Completely none. 
Oh yeah, my doctor said it could be really, really bad. I could be out for like, I don't know, one to two years or something. What? Wait, really? But it's made of cre- That's made of milk?